Hello and welcome. My name is Joanna. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new, I am a homeschooling mom to a fourth grader who will be 10 in June. Um, and I'm so glad you're here. Um, if you've been here before, I'm so glad you're back. Um, and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the resources and materials we used for our mammal study. I will link below in the description box as well my video on the resources we used for our bird study. I think our bird study was our largest so far. Um, and our mammal study was a little bit smaller. Our reptiles and amphibians is even smaller. But I just want to share with you guys the um, materials and resources. It's mostly books, a few printouts, uh, and, and a few games, very few. It was a really nice and simple study. It is one we do with two other families. We love doing this this year. That's what we've focused on in biology is the animal kingdom. We started with birds and then as I'm going to show you our mammals and we're currently in our reptiles and amphibians study um, and then we'll do insects. So we did one per quarter of the school year. It's been a lot of fun. The kids love getting together. We always, regardless of the weather, are out in nature. When we do our study, we do it once a week um, all together. And we have topics for each week. And the moms switch off talking about those topics or doing an activity or picking a location that sort of where we think we'll see things that kind of go with what we're studying. Um, and we've really, really enjoyed it. All right, there's really not too much to show. Um, if you, a lot of the things, I think we're also in the bird study, except the things that are gonna be specifically about mammals. Um, so let me just get started. First is our DK Smithsonian Animal Book. Um, if I sound stuffy, sniffly, it's allergies. It's, the pollen over here is really bad right now. And um, my, I don't normally have allergies, but right now it's affecting me. So that means that Julian, my son, is really gonna be affected because he has very bad allergies. All right, so we use the DK Animal Book. And in this book, it does have a section on mammals, which we used here in our home. Obviously, we did not bring this book around with us. It is very big. Um, <clears throat> the first page really gives you a great amount of information about mammals. After that, it's mostly, um, you're just looking at different mammals. So there's not too much information, but it is a fun book to look through. We love DK books. This is a nice one just to look through. So we look through all the mammals and you know what made them different and what made them similar. And of course that most, the majority of mammals are placentals. And of course it does show you the monotremes and the marsupials in here as well. So this is a good one. It's just a fun book sometimes too, to just look through because who doesn't like to look at the animals? This is probably one of my favorite resources is this Outdoor School Animal Watching, the Definitive Interactive Nature Guide. Um, it's nice and tough. Um, the cover is nice and tough. The pages are regular pages, but it's a nice tough cover. It has your ruler here on the back, and it really is about going out and watching animals. It gives you lots of information. We used it for the birds and for the mammals. It is a gorgeous book. We're using it for the reptiles and amphibians. The only one we won't use it for is insects because it doesn't have it. But um, we are loving this book. It gives you so many ways to watch the animals. Tells you about um, the animals, how to track them, mapping their sounds, recording signs, how to draw them, lots of things. And then it goes into, let's see if I can get to one of those pages, the individual uh, it has so much information before you even get to the individual animals. So I really appreciate that. So here's what it looks like when you get to pages with showing you animals. These are North American, I believe, only in here, which is helpful. It has a range map. It tells you everything from size, shape, color, behavior, habitat, points of fact, and then some where you can write down if you saw it and some information as well. I really, really love this book. Oh, it does show you the tracks as well, which I, of course, didn't show here. I'll just also gives you the tracks and the size of the tracks. Um, and of course, some little descriptive things on those animals. I really, really enjoyed this book. I love it. 
Julian loves it. it. The vocabulary in it is great for the kids. Love it. <laughs> just really, I recommend this one a lot. This was just another fun one. Um, it's not anything you need. It's the secret lives of animals, 1001 tidbits, oddities, and amazing facts about North America's coolest animals. I believe, I want to say I got this one from Rainbow Resource, beginning of the school year. Um, it's really nice because it does have fun tidbits in it. And I used it for the birds and the mammals. I like their science Q&A, like what's the difference between horns and antlers. Um, and then on each animal, there's little known facts. And that's fun because to Julian, those are fun facts. And he loves fun facts. That's his thing. Fun facts are his jam. He loves them. They also have like, uh, let me see, one of those go outside things. Yep, go outside. Has like a little sort of activity, something to do outside. Um, it says, we don't have a lot of big cats in North America, but there are some pretty cool ones out there in the world. Do a little research and make a list of five other big cats and do a comparison on what makes them similar and makes them different. So just some little activities. Very simple. We love the little known facts. That's probably our favorite thing in, in, these book, in this book. Um, another resource that I love is these The Science of Living Things, Bobby Catlin books. These are by Crabtree Publishing. Um, this one is What is a Mammal? So this was literally perfect for us. Um, and I loved it because it told us what a mammal was. Gave us the different groups of mammals, which the children really enjoyed figuring out what group their mammal that they chose was in. Each child chose one mammal to study in specific. Julian chose the Eastern chipmunk. Someone chose a rabbit. Someone chose a deer, bison, and a, I want to say a black bear. So it was fun seeing what group our... Oh, it's a brown, sorry, Julian just corrected me. It was a brown bear. Uh, what group they were in. And then it tells you about mammal's body, mammal's milk, which is an important part of being a mammal. And then it goes into telling you about the different groups, monotremes, marsupials, and then growing with the placenta, which is the majority of mammals. And then it just goes into the different, the, um, the different groups and gives you information. I really enjoyed this one for when we were talking about what is a mammal. This was perfect, loved it. This was a really fun book, um, Who Has a Belly Button? And this is just about mammals, um, about how they have belly buttons because we're placentals. So it's cute because I don't think kids ever really think about animals having belly buttons. So I really, enjoyed this book. Julian really enjoyed this book. We bought it used. It's a um, ex-library book, but I'm so happy we have it. It is, oops, sorry. It is such a fun one to have, and we've read it a few times because we enjoyed it so much. So I definitely recommend Who Has a Belly Button. It's not something you have to own, but it is a really good one to read if you're doing a mammal study. My sister introduced me to this book. Here's another one that we read, and we read it for also reptiles and amphibians. It's Animal Class, What Class Are You? And this one talks about vertebrates. So it's talking about the class of vertebrates, and obviously mammals are in that class. Um, it's cute. It rhymes. It's got, you know, that rhythmic um, rhyming text, and it, then it goes into like, you know, amphibians, but it had, um, you know, the mammals, and that was fun to read, and the birds, and we really, it was cute. It's not, I, it's not mine. I took it out the library. It's not one I need to have, but it was cute to read while we had it because since we do the taxonomy, it's really nice for them to understand wh what they're breaking down how you keep just um, going from this big group, the, the you know, this kingdom, and how you get down to your species and what class is. So very cute book. We enjoyed that one from the library for life cycles. Once again, these Bobby Cowman books, really enjoy them. We got the animal life cycles growing and changing. It's very nice, talks about life cycles. We read all the ones in here on mammals. For diet, um, food webs and food chains. 
Here on home we read who eats what, food chains and food webs, as well as again, another Science of Living Things Bobby Kalman book, food chains and webs. Oh no, what are food chains and webs? So I really enjoy this because it really breaks it down. It's, you know, you it starts with um, energy from food and you're gonna go into plants are producers and you go from producer each page down to decomposers. So that was a really nice one. Then we talked about what our animals did in winter. It was winter time when we studied mammals. So we did um, how, we read how do animals adapt, because some animals adapt. These are all Bobby Kalman books, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do animals adapt? What is hibernation? And what is migration? So these were good for that part of our study. As I said, a lot of our study was based on books. Um, when we did tracks and scats, um, I don't have a book out for that, um, but the mom that was there had a wonderful book that had life-size tracks in it, and that was really nice. We really enjoyed that. And then as well, I got some specific books on chipmunks. Finding nonfiction books on chipmunks is very difficult. Let me let you, let me just tell you right now. So nonfiction, on the other hand, um, I'm sorry, let me start that over. <laughs> nonfiction books are hard to find on chipmunks. Fiction books are very easy. Anything from, there are plenty of books where the characters are chipmunks, but nonfiction is very difficult. I happen to have this vintage um, chipmunks book. This was a good one that talks to you about chipmunks and it didn't have, you know, it was nice and simple, but you know, I, I was hoping for something a little bit more in depth for Julian's age. We got a day in the life of a chipmunk. Again, not much information, but it was nice. We ordered this specifically for this study and it was okay. Again, I had hoped for more. And then one of our uh, fiction books was Chipmunk at Hollow Tree Lane. I love these Smithsonian backyard books because while they are fiction, you know, it's talking, you're, you're following this chipmunk in your backyard. It, it really is very informational still and what a chipmunk would really be doing. So I enjoy these a lot, so we read that. And as far as printouts, we didn't really use that many this time. Um, a lot of our printouts were mostly like made from home. Everybody got some, when we did the life cycle, like fun facts on life cycles, like, you know, African elephants have the longest gestation period for 22 months. Mammals are the only animals that are fed milk from their mother. Just fun facts. And each of the kids got one of those. Um, I, a lot of the, not a lot, there's only three other kids. The other kids are younger than Julian but I still wanna make sure that I'm challenging Julian for his age. So I, whatever I do for him, I share with the other kids and I have given them lots of questions that they could research online on their animals when we did the life cycles. So that way they, if they wanted to put that information in their journals, they could. We had, when we talked about migration, hibernation and adaptation, these cards on what some of these mammals do during the winter and I can't remember where I found these. So if I find it, I will link it in the description below. Uh, let's see, oh, in that book that I showed earlier with the tidbits, it, it had a how do animals survive the winter and I have printed it out because it was something that had really good information for the kids. I printed out for Julian lots of information on the chipmunks because as I said, I couldn't find good nonfiction books. So we just went online and printed out plenty of information on the Eastern chipmunk. And that worked well too. And it was more what I was looking for. Um, it had, you know, we found lots of great facts, history, diet, ecology, taxonomy, all that great, great stuff on chipmunks was online. So sometimes, as much as I love books, sometimes I can't find the right book and just printing out this information I found online was wonderful. Um, when we talked about their diet and food chains and food webs, I'm over here losing things, <laughs> each of the kids got their animal's food chain as well as their like a food web with their animal in it that they could put in their journal. 
if they wanted to. And we talked about how important teeth were in the, in, in the food chain and as far as their diet goes. So you have certain teeth for certain things. A carnivore won't have the same kind of teeth as a, an herbivore. So we talked about the teeth and they had this wonderful chart and using this chart because we're able to see what kind of teeth their mammal had. And after that, they had a really fun project of putting their animal's teeth on themselves. We've lost one tooth here. <laughs> so he had the Eastern Chipmunk, hence these long teeth in the front for cracking nuts. And I, at first I thought Julian would think this was a silly project. It may be young for him, but he loved it. The kids loved it because look how silly they look. This is hilarious. It was so much fun. A, a simple project, but it talked about their skulls, their teeth, and it really brought it together for the kids. When we talked about the tracks, as I said before, the kids um, got a printout of the tracks they could look for while we were on our nature walk. Happened to be a very icy day and it was very hard to find tracks because the ground was frozen. So even when we stepped, we weren't making tracks, but we still had a lot of fun. I think we saw one rabbit track that had just gotten frozen there. Um, it was probably there previously and it froze. So that was um, one of the handouts the kids got. This is from Mass Wildlife. Yeah, I'll link that below. The kids made a picture of what their animal does during winter. Here's Julian's Eastern Chipmunk in his burrow with his uh, nuts. Oh, sorry, that's not the nuts. With his nuts, <laughs> his store of nuts. And that's his restroom, apparently. Um, and they do not really hibernate. They do sleep through a lot of winter, but they are not hibernating. And then the kids got, this was from the, um, the watch book, the animal watching. Um, it was talk like a mammalogist. And I printed this out because it had amazing vocabulary words here for the kids. Canines, field marks, lagomorphs, marsupials, solitary, you know, just wonderful vocabulary for the kids. So this was, once again, like I said, I really love that book. And this was one of the things I thought the kids could really enjoy and learn these words and use these words and they could sound more like scientists. So that was fun. And at the end, each kid got a certificate for completing. It says that they are now junior mammologists and they had gotten one at the end of the bird study as well. Each kid got a keychain with a little motif show, depicting something from their mammal. So we got an acorn for the chipmunk. Each kid got their patch. I still haven't put it on our pendant, but Julian got his little chipmunk. And the kids made their own life cycle discs um, to put on a mat. They made little arrows, super cute. Here's Julian's, let's see, we've got the newborns, you can see them and they're having milk there. <laughs> and he wrote on the back newborn and he has his pup and he wrote on the back of all of them. He's got his juvenile and then he's got his adult, which is a buck or a doe. So the kids each made those. Um, of course they had their journals, which they use a lot of printouts plus a lot of their own work. Just drop something over there out of here taxonomy, anatomy, groups. This was that picture in that Bobby Kalman book of the groups. I um, I copied it and minimized it because I thought this was a great one to have as well. Life cycles, just everything we studied in here. Um, what fell out was a miniaturized version of their certificate that they could glue at the end of their journal. And this was to save on buying journals and not wasting. This was also the bird study so on this when you flip it over you've got your bird study on that side and when you flip it over you've got your mammal study as far as games really only two um which was professor noggins wildlife of north america obviously not just mammals but close enough and it was north american animals which is what we focused on so we played that and animal tracks and we just used the mammal cards from this one and took out the other ones and that was it. And then the rest was just um, 
videos on YouTube, Wild Kratz. We still love Wild Kratz. He's always loved Wild Kratz and he still hasn't outgrown them. So that is what we did for our mammal study. Those are the resources we, we used. As you saw, there wasn't really as many printouts this time. It was a lot of books and being out in nature. And to end the year, not the year, sorry, the study, we went to the National Zoo. That was so much fun. It was a great way to go see all the mammals they had there. I'm not much of a zoo person. Um, I'm always conflicted about zoos, but we had a really great time and it really reinforced the things the kids uh, had learned. And then they also saw birds, which we had had that study, but they also started to look at the reptiles and amphibians, which was gonna be our next study. So when we started, we already had some good knowledge from the things we saw at the zoo and read and learned. It was a great trip. The kids had a blast. It was a full day, a fun day. So that was how we ended our mammal study. Um, so that's what we did for our mammal study. I hope that helps you if you decide that you want to do some sort of mammal study or just the animal kingdom, which is pretty much what we're doing for our biology. Just, yeah, this is what we use. We loved it. We're having tons of fun. Um, like I said, the, what was it? The animal watching book and all those Bobby Calvin books have been the two things I think I use the most during the mammal study. All right, thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope that you found lots of helpful information for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will reply to the best of my knowledge. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.